For a while, it seemed as if themed restaurants were the next big thing, from dining in a simulated rainforest to sharing a meal with your favorite celebrity. However, the excitement was short-lived, and today, many of these once iconic, bustling establishments shuttered their doors. Why did themed restaurants fail, and could we see a comeback? To truly understand this, we need to look at why themed restaurants came to be. One of the earliest forms of themed dining can be traced back to the concept of novelty architecture. They might as well be the start of themed restaurants in some sense. Take for instance this hot dog themed building. It directly says to you it's a place that sells hot dogs. The building is a sign by itself. Or the Brown Derby for instance, a restaurant in Hollywood that had a giant hat. Tiki bars were another influential force in the world of themed dining, bringing their own brand of escapism and nostalgia. When Disneyland opened in 1955, it changed the history of themed entertainment forever, as the immersion of the park went beyond just the architecture. Here cast members were dressed according to each land. As so, themed dining would also be a part of this experience. The Chicken of the Sea was a massive boat themed to Peter Pan, but was also a dining location. The rise of pop culture in the post-war era had a profound impact in art and in the world of dining. In terms of theme dining, we would see the rise of an iconic brand. Hard Rock Café might be the start of it all. Taking advantage of a rising rock culture and American burgers, Hard Rock grew like no other restaurant could. The gimmick of Hard Rock in terms of design is the display of memorabilia, guitars, costumes, so definitely a product of pop culture and even celebrity culture. Take a look at the design for a typical Hard Rock restaurant. Some of them are inspired by classical architecture, but in an ironic way, almost making fun of how rock stars are viewed today as Greek gods. Another element present in Hard Rock was the idea of collage as some hard rock cafes featured large classical columns, rock ornamentation, but you might as well find a car in the middle of it all, and giant guitars. It's the idea of a mishmash of elements, decorations and themes, all united under the concepts of rock and roll. When hard rock first came to the United States, it would set a standard for theme dining to come, and by that I mean many would want to reach the success it had. Taking advantage of celebrity culture, Planet Hollywood would come to be, with its first location in New York City. It offered visitors the opportunity to dine with their favorite celebrities, or at least a wax version of them. We can definitely spot many similarities between the two brands. For instance, Planet Hollywood featured many props from blockbuster films, and the idea of collage was still present but Planet Hollywood might have taken it a bit too far. Take for instance the downtown Disney location that opened in 1994 with a quite peculiar interior, a bizarre mix of Egyptian motifs, zebra stripes and oversized film props. In this sense, Planet Hollywood serves as a viable design lesson on what can go wrong when the idea of collage becomes too excessive. However, celebrity culture didn't stop there. We would see others try to get their hand in the business. Take for instance the Country Star, a country music themed restaurant. Even Steven Spielberg and Jeffrey Katzenberg would create Dive, an interesting venue with a great premise and thankfully better interior design with modern nautical motifs, but it didn't find success it needed to stay afloat. Another celebrity restaurant would be Margarita Ville, Founded by singer-songwriter Jimmy Buffett, this one saw more success. What set Margarita Ville apart from other celebrity-themed restaurants was its strong connection to the persona of Jimmy Buffett and his lifestyle. In the world of sports, we would see Michael Jordan's restaurant in Chicago, we would also see the official All-Stars Café, utilizing again the memorabilia concept, but in typical sports bar fashion, had massive screens featuring popular sports. Disney came out with a similar concept with ESPN Zone, 
We would also see the bizarre fashion cafe. With the hopes that fashion would be the next big thing, the restaurant aimed to merge the worlds of fashion and food with memorabilia from iconic fashion shows and famous designers. I mean, what's the appeal of that? However, despite the aim of the celebrity founders and a high profile launch, Fashion Café struggled to gain a foothold and eventually had to close its doors. The main downside to celebrity themed restaurants is that the appeal of them is short lived, giving fans the false expectation that they might meet their favorite celebrity while dining is unrealistic and frankly stupid. It might attract massive lines at the beginning, but it's not sustainable. However, themed dining took an even more immersive turn. In 1994, the world was forever changed with the opening of Rainforest Café, which brought you into a whole new level of themed dining, designed to transport guests into the heart of a lush tropical rainforest, this restaurant combined food with an environment experience unlike anything seen before. Animatronic animals, cascading waterfalls, dense foliage and periodic rainstorms set the stage for an adventure-packed meal, making Rainforest Café a family favorite. The restaurant's appeal lay in its ability to immerse guests in this fantastical world that combines entertainment with dining. Each location was designed to mimic the ecosystem of a rainforest, complete with thunder, lightning, utilizing special effects that would rumble throughout the restaurant every so often. Guests could dine under canopies of trees, while life-size gorillas and elephants moved and made annoying sounds around them. The use of audio animatronics and sound effects added a layer of excitement that made the experience particularly appealing to children and families, transforming a simple meal into a family-filled adventure. The restaurant even had its own mascots, with themed merchandise. They thought it would be the next Mickey Mouse. This blending of entertainment gave the café an edge in an era where ecological issues were gaining more attention. Rainforest Café was emblematic of the 90s, a time where restaurants became immersive environments rather than just a place to eat. Its success led to rapid expansion across the United States and in some locations internationally. While the Rainforest Café was originally a huge success, its popularity waned over the years, likely due to brand fatigue and a failure to engage guests long term. Another concept by the same company was the T-Rex Café. This had audio animatronic dinosaurs and a meteor shower. T-Rex is a fun concept I still enjoy, however, currently there is only one location left, at Disney Springs. This is an important fact we have to keep in mind. If themed restaurants want to succeed, they need to bring people back to the table, or at least have a huge influx of tourists. We would also see the rise of IP-based theme restaurants, like the Bubba Gump Shrimp Company. The restaurant has a more rustic fishing atmosphere, with memorabilia from the hit film Forrest Gump. However, what matters here is the scale, it's more human, you don't have huge oversized props, rather small portraits or fishing memorabilia. However, things would get even crazier, or should I say magical, introducing Copperfields Magic Underground. Imagine a crazy concept where you enter the world of magicians and still don't discover their secrets. The original location was supposed to be in Times Square, however, another venue would be located at MGM Studios in Walt Disney World. In terms of interior design, think something like Hard Rock, Mirmobilia everywhere, but this time it's Magician Mirmobilia. By 1996 and 1997, the New York location was nearly complete, with the building in place and the interior beginning to take shape. However, despite all the hype, the project never made to opening day. Perhaps that was the biggest magic trick David played on us. As always, it was a budgetary issue. Investors grew uncomfortable with the growing costs and uncertainties surrounding such project. Eventually pulling the plug, construction in New York came to a sudden halt and the Times Square location venue was abandoned, just as it was nearing completion. Now, imagine dining your restaurant out of this world. Well. Welcome to Mars 2112. Imagine walking in the middle of New York City and suddenly 
finding a huge sunken plaza with an alien-looking spacecraft. After entering this mysterious venue, you embark on a simulator journey to space and to the year 2112. Welcome to Mars! Instead of Hard Rock and its copycats, Mars 2112 would be completely immersive. You would dine in an atmosphere out of this world, with rock-shaped walls and a unique furniture design, making the whole experience something unique. Additionally, walk around alien characters helped you feel as if you were in the Red Planet or Reddish Orange Planet. The project had a larger than life scale, making you truly feel as if you're leaving Earth and entering this weird postmodern world. After enjoying a mediocre meal, you would leave this space via a teleportation device. Other than the New York location, we would also have another one opening up in a mall. Another venue I would like to touch on is the Cheesecake Factory. The Cheesecake Factory is a unique offering. Picturing what a cheesecake restaurant looks like may sound boring or uninteresting, yet the interior design of said restaurants is simply genius. The interiors feature an eclectic mixture of Egyptian, Art Nouveau, Renaissance, Greek motifs. It's again that idea of collage, but in a more respectable way. The materials used give a more comforting feel, and the Art Nouveau details help create a unique experience. While the Cheesecake Factory is not necessarily a classic example of a themed restaurant, its design is quite notable. Unlike other themed restaurants, the Cheesecake Factory was a huge success. The trend of themed restaurants did not last forever. Quickly, many investors discovered that the whole concept was unsustainable as operating costs tend to be higher compared to other big chain restaurants. When you have a lot of people visiting your shop, that is fine, but when you struggle to bring people back, the costs just keep adding up. Planet Hollywood struggled a lot and many of their original locations closed. The downtown Disney location would be renovated, now embracing an observatory theme, and the Disneyland Paris location closed forever. The hype was short-lived. The idea of themed restaurants didn't die then, but it became clear the trend was just a trend. In order for themed restaurants to survive, they have to be at a popular area, not in the middle of a suburban parking lot. Even then, they need to find a way to bring people back. Imagine something like seasonal events, annual passes, like programs. The biggest issue we have yet to touch on is the food. Themed restaurants have a bad reputation for their food. Many critics claim such restaurants have a generic yet expensive food, providing mediocre value. Yet I push back, saying it's an issue of marketing and demand. The issue is that most of these restaurants have a generic family-style menu without providing something unique or desirable. It's the same thing, burgers, tacos and some protein. If a themed restaurant can surpass this issue, it may become a true success. Yet, it's not all gone today. These experiences have transformed, offering something deeper than nostalgia. They are becoming gateways to worlds we adore, keeping the magic alive in new exciting ways. Hard Rock Cafe, the early pioneer, has grown into a global icon with music, memorabilia and dining all wrapped into this one location. We can see the market has consolidated. Beyond that, we have seen the expansion of IP-themed restaurants. Yes, in the 90s we had Marvel Mania, but now we have Hello Kitty cafes, Pokemon cafes and even Snoopy cafes. In Brazil we have a themed Jurassic Park restaurant. This is the evolution of themed dining. It's not about the novelty, but the emotional ties that connect us to the characters and the stories that have shaped our lives. Each visit to such restaurants is a chance to step into a universe where nostalgia meets adventure and a meal with your favorite characters. Now we don't need celebrities, the celebrities are the IPs, so there is not that false sense of hype. We have to find ways to immerse guests into these worlds without being over the top or tacky. Themed restaurants have to offer the best food and the best theming to truly transport you onto these fantastic worlds. So even though the heyday of the 90s themed restaurants might seem like a distant memories, the spirit lives on. So are you excited for your next dining adventure?